Hello, this is the third and concluding um, part of Life's Lesson series, which um, I have been talking about over the past week or so. And today, this topic is on grief. Um, and I believe there were quite a few people who actually requested that I speak on this topic because it's a very um, heavy topic, so to speak, you know. Um, at every point of time, in any point of time, all of us go through this emotion, um, a lesson, which is undeniably one of the most difficult ones to go through in this dimension. Um, and we call it death. In this dimension, it's known as death, although it's more of referred to as a transition to the next level, um, and sometimes it's referred to as a form of um, passing to another, to the other side of the veil, where we come from. When I talk about grief, my perception of grief may not really um, suit a lot of you because my perception of grief is different. Although I have lost uh, loved ones as well, I have family on the other side um, who I really love and miss. You know, even though I believe that, um, I, I feel very grateful that I have gifts that enable me to see them and to be with them. Um, I still feel the grief just like anyone else. My form of grief may be a little different um, when compared to that of others, but it does not in any way mean that it's it's less painful to lose someone um, to death. The only way of overcoming grief at all is by understanding that we need to um, look at it from a different perspective, set the pain aside, and to understand it from you know, a different perspective, basically. One that actually helps you to understand that death is an illusion. An illusion which changes a breathing, living, solid person into an energy. Now, we are all energy. We're primarily all made of energy. We are not this skin and flesh and bones and hair that we see and know around us. We are basically just energy. So when we pass to the other side, after completing our mission here in this dimension, in this dense dimension, we return to our original form. We shed this meat suit, so to speak, or if you may call it the, the, the form that you need to carry to exist in this world, in this dimension, a solid form you shed that to go back to where you came from. Now, the thing is that as people, what we feel about death is the separation. When we think of grief, we think of separation. Separation that sets you aside, away from those who you have loved and grown with and lived with, shared so many beautiful memories with, you know, you feel like that is the end of it. And many people fear this transition or what we call as death simply because we think that is the end. And you don't know where they're going after that because you think that it's an unknown place where they're going to. And you don't have to come out here and you know live with such a fact. It is a painful thing to live with, the loss of someone you really loved and shared your life with, or someone you've even briefly known. Grief is supposed to help you to understand the pain of losing someone, which is not, which is not possible in the higher dimensions because you do not lose someone on the other side, all right? The understanding, there is a different level of understanding that if a person has to go somewhere, let's say for, for a mission here on this dimension, they're just leaving. They look at it as if they're going out to work, like how we would look at it if you were to go out to work every day. That is how they look at it. But grief, as we see it in this plane, where we relate it to death, 
the demise of a person who is in solid form into a and in, into another form which is energy which cannot be seen or you know perceived as normal in this dimension we look at it differently because it, it is like it is something that we're not used to suddenly it becomes like a person you love so much goes into some some other space you know what I mean but actually that space is not as far as you think it is that space is not some distant land that space is right where you are but it's in a different frequency it's like tuning into a different channel you know when you tune into their channel you will be able to perceive them you will be able to communicate mediumship is not exclusive it is not there only for a few people a lot anyone can have the mediumship abilities if they were to shed their inhibitions shed their fear and doubts and focus more on how to improve their gifts their spiritual gifts we all have the ability to connect with people on the other side as I would call it but in this world I guess they call it spirits and ghosts and I don't know they have all kinds of names for it you know but for me I would call them people on the other side because from as young as early as I can remember my earliest memories is when I was a toddler I would see spirits just as densely as I see people living here and they didn't look any different they didn't appear any different they didn't do anything different they did the same things that we did so there was a lot of confusion for the first 10 years of my life I was always confused between who's alive and who's not so it used to be funny you know now when I think about it it's funny but at that point of time it wasn't so funny because I was trying to figure out why do they all look the same and why is it that they have to be thought of as being somewhere else when they're right here but it was only later that I realized that I was only one who was actually able to see them this way and others were either afraid for, for I don't know for why they were afraid and I still don't know why people are afraid but many of us seem to be afraid to see someone in spirit you know as a spiritual guide I have had the privilege of meeting all kinds of people around the world and I've had some really funny moments I've had some amusing times with people who encountered spirits or people on the other side they are so you know this this world is so easily influenced by the media and the folklores the many stories that have been passed down from generations for you know whatever purpose they served back then I feel that most of them were to inflict fear all right even the horror films you know they were they're basically to inflict fear when most of it does not make sense yes there is darkness there is darkness there is also light why isn't someone going out there making a movie about what happens in the afterlife why doesn't you know very few movies like ghost you know it's a mu it's a beautiful movie about the afterlife and there are so many such beautiful stories you know and I personally have experienced um, and remember every incarnation of mine and therefore I remember how it felt to be in between trans uh, in, in between incarnations I know how it felt to be that and I feel that at this point of time the entire concept of grieving for someone blocks us when we continue it for a long time yes you have the right you have the need you must grieve grief is an expression in this world in this dimension when somebody moves on to the other side you miss that person so you have the right to grieve over them but how long can you grieve how long would you grieve are you really blocking something when you grieve for a prolonged period yes you are because most of the times from my experiences and my observation of uh, of spirits who go to the other side after they with the up to they're done with this world they try to connect with their loved ones all right they try to make sure they, they reach out to tell them they're all right they reach out to tell them certain things that probably 
you know, they wouldn't like to share it with anyone else but you. And they don't know how to communicate either. I mean, they're trying so hard. There's only very little means. It's not like you can send an email to a person or you can give a phone call. It's no longer none of those things that we're used to as people is available as soon as you cross over. So you have very limited ways of communicating with people here. So when you grieve for someone who you're really close with, give some space. Give some space and time to yourself and the one who has passed so that they can actually come through and communicate with you. All right? They need to do that. Put yourself in their shoes. Put yourself in their shoes because someday all of us have to leave. None of us is going to be over here for forever. We all have to get to the other side. What will be the first thing that you want to do when you get to the other side? And you're no longer in pain, you're no longer suffering, and you want to make sure that your loved ones know that you're all right. That is the first thing that comes to everybody's thoughts. You want to let them know you're all right. And at that point of time, when they are grieving for months on end or years on end, and there's, you know, the, the air is so, the vibration is so thick and low that you can, there's no way you can get through. It is frustrating, it is very sad, and it's disappointing as well, because they'll be sitting around waiting, you know. So grief, just like any other emotion, has to be taken in, has to be felt, and released into the universe. Understanding that the soul is eternal. The soul is eternal. There is no end. There is no goodbye. There's always a we'll see you again. Think of it as someone who's going to work and getting back home. And you're at work too, but you need to get home too. So think of it from a different perspective. And you will see that not only are you able to overcome grief better than you have before, you also pave the way for communication, which is not exclusive, which is there for you as well. If you would only open your heart and receive messages from your loved ones who have crossed over. Going to a medium and going to mediums and asking them for readings and all that is fine. But bear in mind that life is not just sitting on a clouds playing a harp when you're at, in the afterlife. That's not what it's all about. Yes, you don't have to work for money. Yes, you don't have to eat because you're hungry. And yes, you don't really get so tired that you need to sleep. But they do have things to do on the other side. That is why I don't take up mediumship readings. Many of you, even during my live sessions, you ask me, why aren't you answering questions related to people who passed on? You're not taking any messages. You're, I'm not taking any messages because I'm not getting any messages. And I respect their privacy too, just like I respect yours, and just like I expect mine to be respected. You see, there are people, they are, they are still the same people in just a different form. They have things to do when they get to the other side. You know, so it is not always possible to access them just because they have passed. It does not mean that they do nothing over there. So you have to have an understanding of the reason why I do not take up mediumship readings or entertain much of, you know, um, questions relating to loved ones who are on the other side. I absolutely understand that it is very important for some of you that you get in touch with those you know, you've loved, who passed on. I know making such a connection is amazing because I've done it before. And even for myself, I've had people who do it for me. But then again, I don't always get my answers. I don't always get to connect. I get to connect only when they want to connect. That is one of the most important things that you have to understand that you have the ability to connect just by intending it. If you want to talk to someone you, you miss so much who has passed, all you have to do is send out a thought to that person. Tell them you're thinking about them. You would like to have some signs from them. If they're free, they will come along. Or put a certain time because they can adjust to our hours too. So tell them, okay, I would like to meet you, you know, or get some sign from you or connect with you in some way, you know, at a particular time. 
they will get the message. They will make, get the message much clearer than we do get the message. So you're paving the way for communication, even though they've moved on to another dimension. It is not the end. Because trust me, I have loved ones on the other side. And I make conscious effort to communicate with them. I do. Because it is important for me, it is important for them. I learned a lot of things from them. My experiences as a psychic, as a spiritual guide has improved tremendously because I observe them, because I communicate with them. And um, that's one of my prime sources. So I want you to know it's not exclusively only for me. It's there for every one of us. Yes, they do hear us. Yes, they do. They do hear us. They do see us. And if it's any consolation to any one of you who's lost a loved one and know you're wondering where they are, what they're doing, let me tell you, they would be probably doing just as well, if not better, on the other side. And they do live normally. There are houses. There, are, there is food. If they want to eat something that they really enjoyed when they were alive, there is food. They don't have to eat it because they're hungry. They eat it because they want to. And they do sleep. Yes, they do sleep. Some of them just love their sleep. I've got a guy who loves his sleep. He sleeps more than I do. So, there, there, there are different things that they love to do, you see. They have a life, you know, until they decide what to do with their, their you know, the, the evolution of your soul, until they decide what the next level would be for them, until they decide if they should incarnate or they should go in for something else or head for another dimension. Whatever they plan to do, they will decide. Until that decision is made, until they figure that out, they are around. They hear you, they see you, they visit you. And yes, they do wish that sometimes you would know that they are there. Unless, of course, your mind is completely blocked with grief and fear and doubt. When the, another thing that blocks is doubt. When you doubt whether certain signs that you're receiving could be a coincidence, could be your mind playing tricks on you. Well, let me tell you, there are no coincidences as far as spirituality is concerned. There is very limited source for them to communicate. And they will do the best they can with that limited resources to connect with you. You see, so if it feels right inside that it's a sign, it probably is. All right, it probably is a sign. If it's a dream that you've had of a loved one, you probably have spoken to that person when they were in your dreams. So never underestimate your thoughts, the signs that come your way, because it is very sad when you don't recognize these signs simply because of your ego, simply because you think you know better. You think, oh, that's like, you know, a feather? Oh, well, you know, probably a bird just shed it there, you know. It's not always something logical. You don't have to put logic into every experience. You don't. The less you add logic into love and peace, the more beautiful it will seem. Because ego and logic they don't blend well with love and peace. And that's a fact of life at any point of time. So open your hearts and soul to receiving messages from your loved ones. Don't block yourself by grieving for months on end over someone who's passed. When they are not gone, they are very much accessible. They just kind of, let's say, drop their uniforms so they can go home. So I want you to open your hearts and minds and receive the blessings of communicating with your loved ones. They have not left anywhere. How can they just turn into a cloud of smoke and disappear? They can't do that. You wouldn't do that if you were them, would you? No, of course not. I wouldn't want to just disappear. I would want to keep an eye on my loved ones, my family that I leave behind. I want to see if they're okay. I want them to know that I'm okay. I will try to reach out. It's the basic thing that all of us want to do. Just because you, you know, you pass on to the next 
uh, dimension. It doesn't mean that automatically you start becoming disconnected and you become a completely different person all of a sudden. All of this holy, holy stuff works only for some. The highly evolved, um, enlightened, I don't know how much else you can say, people who don't really, you know, worry much about families and connections, they're the, possibly the only ones who don't have the need to communicate with their loved ones. Every other soul does. They visit their loved ones. I know because I observe it on a day-to-day -day basis. I know. They reach out. They watch you from afar, from distance, from next to you, right next to you. Sometimes they send out thoughts to you. They hope that you get the message. They sit and wait eagerly. They look with much eagerness into your face to see if you get the message. You have to see the kind of tears of joy that, that some of them will have. You know, when they see that their loved ones get the message, you see tears of joy rolling down their cheeks because you're so happy. They said, oh, that's me. That's me. I said it. I said it. You know? You have to allow that to happen. You have to allow that to happen. There are many ways they can communicate, but very limited as compared to what we have, the many options that we have. To connect some, with someone, we have even the internet. Think about it. You have to get down to the basics. Trust your senses. Trust your intuition. Trust your smell. Trust your taste. Trust your sight. All of these ways are basic elementary ways that they can connect with you. Alright? So you have to trust your intuition. Don't keep running up to a medium because Mediums can only connect. There's a certain level of privacy that your loved ones would still expect. Doesn't mean that they have passed on, that they don't require any privacy. There may be some issues that they don't want to discuss in front of a stranger. It still applies even after they've passed away. Let me tell you that. They deserve the same kind of respect as when they are alive. And that is why even today I don't believe in calling them spirits or ghosts. I don't even refer to them as dead. I refer to them as people on the other side. I call them by their name. I address them by their name because they deserve the respect and they deserve the privacy and the love. Just like when they are alive. It doesn't make them any less deserving of any of this just because they passed. I respect every soul that walks in through to my office during a reading. I respect each and every one of them. And they know that. So open up. Grief is something that has to happen. It is a lesson in life that we came to learn. But it is not the end. It is just another chapter. There are no goodbyes. There is only, I'll see you again. Send them off with love. If possible, if you have the time, if they have the the time and the willingness, tell them to connect with you when they have moved on to the other side. I'm talking about hospice, you know, where there's an opportunity for you to actually communicate with a person and tell them that you would love to hear from them after they've passed. The person is willing to go to that stage and communicate about that, talk about that if you're comfortable. All right. These are very important lessons in life, and this concludes the Life's Lesson series. There are two other video messages uh, which I've done over the past uh, 10 days or so. I want you to go through that if possible and this, therefore this concludes the entire series. I will be back with more and I love you all. Thank you so much for sitting with me tonight. I love you. Namaste.